these will take you through some wizards that will help you build the initial implementation, and then you'll fine tune it after that. For today's exercise, I'm going to select Control Logic. It's asking me, did I want to replace? Uh, and I'm going to say yes. That's just in the previous screen, it showed uh, you know location in a file name. You, you could place it in any folder and type a file name for that. The wizard control, and it has selected the Control Logics chassis. Uh, this little screen, it's going to ask you a lot of questions that help you put together the hardware and the networks and things. Control Logic chassis. How many slots? I'm going to leave this on auto size where it'll configure a uh, chassis big enough for whatever I.O. I configure. My power requirement, you know, is my PLC going to be powered with 120, 24 volts? Also, all of my I.O. cards, uh, most in most situations, I use the screw terminals where you tighten down the screws, but you can do clamp or I.O. ready cables, assemblies and stuff. Uh, I'm going to leave that on screw for this exercise. You just know that that means you're going to land a wire on a screw terminal. You're building something out and you, your customer or your facility always wants to start with a certain number of chassis slots empty or when you're configuring your I.O. if you want it to be 20% spares. You can type these numbers in it and when you start laying out your I.O., it will actually say if you said you were going to do a six, you needed 17 inputs. And you had that at 20%, you know, you want 20% available spares, it would configure two cards or a 32 point IO card to facilitate the numbers and give you growth in that uh, IO platform. Not necessary, we're not going to use it for this, but just wanted to make mention of that. Uh, come down, you can say create a network and it'll build out a full network. I'm going to say regardless of I.O. because I do want to drop a switch in here for this design and we're not going to do distributed I.O. So if you don't do distributed I.O., it wouldn't automatically build out a network. So I'm saying regardless of my I.O., I want to, I want to put an Ethernet network in place. And you can play around with these uh, models. For this exercise, I'm going to use a freeform model. That'll just drop the switch on a plain screen. But know that you could build out a, you know, a company-wide versus a plant-wide network inside this topology. I'm setting it up on a star switch. There are device-level rings and linears. We're going to stay with star. And here's where you would select the switch that you want to use. For this exercise, I'm going to take the uh, uh, Stratix 5700 and the 10 CGA. That's got it's got a gigabit port on it. But you can see all the parameters, different pieces to give you discernment over how many ports you're going to have and stuff like that. So when you're selecting the switch, that's important because it's going to drop it in this hardware build for you. We're going to configure our digital inputs and you can see how this is all menu driven to give you quick, easy, without you having to go do uh, internet searches on all the IO cards and dig through data sheets and configure that. It's going to kind of do that for you. In this exercise, we're going to do DC inputs and I'm going to say a sync non-isolated just for this purpose. I'm going to say I've got 12 inputs that's coming in this design. DC outputs, I'm going to select source non-protected 24 volts. Uh, we'll do 12 of those as well and a couple of contact outputs. So, you know, it uh, you can have form C or uh, normally open. I'm just going to Put three of those in there just so you see how the cards are dropped into this hardware. You configure an analog I.O., single-ended, differential, high-speed, voltage, current. Uh, we're going to select three current isolated inputs. we got RTDs, thermocouples. So you're just dropping numbers in for how many points you're planning on pulling into this design. If you're doing any motion control, we're not going to do uh, motion control in this particular, but you could set up CIP motion or circos and how many axes. Additionally, in here, if I was laying out distributed IO networks as pictured here, I could set up additional networks here and select the hardware and what's controlling that device, net, Ethernet. I'm not going to do that. I can also have it launch wizards. If I put numbers down here, it will launch wizards to help me build out those distributed IO platforms. Initially, then, it's going to come in and give me a glimpse of the bill of materials, if you will, of what it's planning on putting together and allow me to select, you know, if I didn't, if I didn't want this processor and I wanted a different one, the ability to change that before it builds that out. But based on what I've told it so far, this is the hardware that it's laid out and it's based on these quantity and points. If I wanted to change those numbers, I came in and said, oh, no, no, I got four of the normally open digital out. 
contacts that I want. So I, I can modify that at any point along the way. And then I hit the, the finish button. Uh, it immediately asked me, do would I like to configure any distributed IO? And if I say yes, it's going to launch a distributed IO wizard. And we're going to say no. Again, here's that wizard screen that kind of it launched us into because of the opening screen that I told it I wanted a control logics uh, chassis. In that, you can see here where we launched a control logics wizard and it built that out. I can go back in that, rerun that, modifying it anytime. But just know in this wizard platform, there's a, many different options here for compact logics, micro 800 distributed IO and any migrations. If you're trying to migrate a slick or a digital IO migration, there are wizards that help you take that old architecture and pull it into the new. All right, immediately I'm gonna go and show you the hardware. If I click on the hardware tab down here, it pulls up the hardware that's built. As you can see, it's very graphical in nature to show you the pieces and parts that are uh, was built out in that configuration, our power supply, Ethernet card, processor, our digital in, digital out, relay out, and our analog input card. And if I had more cards, I could select them in this configuration. Know that if I decided later I wanted to put uh, covers, say I wanted to cover these holes, Aqua also sells covers that will cover this hardware to keep it you know, dust tight, things like that. I always put those in. At the beginning of the wizard, I could have checked a box and it would have dropped those on, but I wanted to show you how to add something in. Realize how easy it is. Any of these cards can move to a different slack. Just drag and drop it and it goes to that slot. So for some reason, I wanted to move those two and have the processor on the left. It's just a matter of moving something out of the way and putting it there. I'm going to leave it there for this exercise just because that's how I build it out. But you can move this stuff around. If I wanted to get an additional card, I'm going to drop these covers on top just to show you how that works. 1756, and it'll pull all 1756 components. This is a, that, that's what this chassis is. The EN2, so it gives me every card possible with some descriptive text. I just happen to know that's a EN2, and you can see there, empty slot filler. So I grab that and drag it up. Each one of these things, it shows me my slot chassis, the zero through nine. If for some reason I wanted to uh, get rid of that, I could reconfigure that chassis and say, you know, I want to take that down to a seven. I don't, I don't want all those available slots. I'm not going to move that here, but if I did that, it would chop that chassis and get rid of these pieces. It'll never remove IO cards that you've configured in your system. It'll tell you a warning. To, so you come and deal with getting rid of that card by saying remove module or whatever, so you can trim it down. 